heresy fans, welcome to our battle report for today. I am Luca from MiniWarGaming.com, joined by my guest Frank, and we are playing the Raven Guard against the Word Bears in a 3,000 point match using the Iron Tide from the Exemplary Battles Supplement. We play and call it work. Mini Wargaming's Horse Heresy Battle Report. Let's take a look at the word bearer force today. I am a little rusty with the heresy and especially the word bearer. So bear with me as I run a kind of familiar list with some of the usual suspects. Leading it all, we have Lord Gar Aurelian and he will be joining a command squad retinue today because that's kind of his thing. And that retinue is all going to be what you see is what you get. We got a variety of weapons in there. Power swords, power fists, chain swords, bolters, just a bunch of idiots and uh, following their legion daddy. And one of them is carrying a flag. And then the rest of the forces. Well, I'll go on to my troop choices. I love, 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 love tactical marines with the word bears because that stubborn six rule they have. Not the best, obviously, but it's a good use of it. I got four squads of 10 and they have a Legion Vexilla each. No other upgrades, no artificer armor, no nothing. Just just honest bolters and, uh, and hatred. Enmity would be a better word because hatred is a mechanic that they don't have. I should probably talk about the rest of my characters. I got three of them. One, I'll be running a Moritat with the Dark Channeling upgrade to give him the Corrupted subtype. He'll be running around with two Warp Fire Plasma pistols. And that's it. I got two Chaplain upgrades as well. Uh, they are going to be running around with a Tainted Power Mall, and one of them is going to have a Tainted Sword. Uh, otherwise, just bolters. They are upgraded with Dark Channeling, though, to give them the Corrupted subtype as well, because they are going to be joining some Galvorback Dark Brethren. I got two units of these guys. Uh, nice and reliable, pretty heavy hitters, if they can get there. But they're fast, so they usually do. And they are going to be equipped with a Power Fist each. One of the Galvorback have a Power Fist each. I, of course, will pretty much always bring my Maragall. I love the model, and uh, I think his rules are always kind of fun, so try to put him on the table wherever I can. He usually dies right away, but that's fine. It's cool. That's just his lot in life. My fourth elite choice will be a Dark Channeled Ashen Circle unit for the Moritat to join because they're both bitter duty units. Giving them the Dark Channeling so the Moritat can join them because the Corrupted type does reduce leadership nearby. I'm trying to pin things with the Plasma the best I can. Costs a lot of points though, but it's uh, just trying to skew in the word bearer thing. And lastly, I have three different heavy support teams. They're all five strong, no upgrades. Other, oh sorry, they have augury scanners. One is gonna be warp fire cannons. One will be Volkite. And the last one will be last cannons. So I think the last cannons overall will be worthless, but it's still some pretty heavy firepower. Mostly infantry over here on the Raven Guard side of things. There is one Dreadnought, but I mean, we'll see how, that, how well that goes. And that is my list today. We're gonna take a look at the Raven Guard forces. Uh, hello, my name is Frank. I will be playing the Raven Guard. My army is being led by Corvus Corax, and my right of war is Decapitation Strike. Also, I have two HQ choices. I have a Chaplain, with a jump pack, a raven's talon, and a bolt pistol, as well as a librarian. He is a biomancer, and he has a four step. I have one elite's choice, which is going to be a nine-man strong deliverer squad with raven's talons on every single guy. I have one heavy support choice, which is my Deradeo Dreadnought, who has the AI Olos missile launcher and the plasma. I have a ten-man unit of Dark Furies, and I also have a Sky Hunter Squadron with Volkite as my fast attack. They also have Volkite uh, pistols. For my troops choices, I have a Despoiler Squad with Chainswords and Bolt pistols. Three guys have Plasma pistols, the Sergeant has a Lightning Claw, one guy has a Legion Vexilla, and the Sergeant is equipped with Artificer Armor and an Improviser. I have a 10-man Reconnaissance Squad. They're all equipped with Nemesis Bolters, and the Sergeant has a Improviser. Also, one guy has a Nuncio Vox. I have two 10-man Tactical Squads, each with Bayonets, and one guy has a Nuncio Vox. The Sergeant has a Power Weapon or a Lightning Claw, as well as a Plasma Pistol, and an Improviser and Artificer Armor. I also have two Tactical Support Squads, one with Meltas and one with Plasma Guns. Today's mission is Iron Tide, or THE Iron Tide. This is from the Exemplary Battles of the Age of Darkness, Volume 1, yeah. I like this mission, it's nice and easy. It is a capture and control mission, though you get random victory points from the objectives. Random being zero or one in this case. 
Now with the Iron Tide, both Frank and I had placed five objectives. It's D3 plus three, we got five, and they all have to be placed in no man's land outside of our deployment zones, outside of six of one another and the battlefield edges. Now these objectives, you will score at the end of each of your player turns using the normal rules for scoring objectives, you know, mostly line things. And uh, you're gonna roll a D6 for each objective marker you control and 50-50, you get a point or not. However, the defending player will add two to their roll because the attacker gets to go first and they have some assistance in hitting the defender kind of hard. And that would be the primary called the Iron Tide. Now, in this case, both Frank and I rolled. Uh, he is the strategic advantage player and he chose to be the attacker with their Raven Guard, which is very fitting for what we have set up here, which means I'll be the defender and I'll add two to the results of the roll for the Iron Tide primary mission. Now, there will be three additional secondaries in this one. Slay the Warlord, that's a self-explanatory one. In this case, it'll be worth two victory points because we both have Primarchs. Bloodied but Unbroken is the second of third. This is for the defender. If they are somehow able to have more units on the battlefield than the attacker, uh, they will gain a victory point. And into the breach. This is for the attacker at the end of the battle. If they have at least one model from a score unit within six of my battlefield edge, they'll get an additional victory point. And that's effectively it. There are a couple of special rules here. They will have the variable game length five up. There will be reserves and sudden death and night fighting if the attacker chooses to have night fighting, which in this case, Frank will. So that means the game will end on turn four unless we roll a five up for a fifth turn, but should be quick and bloody. Uh, there is no CZ initiative available. The attacker will be going first and a lot of his forces are gonna be in reserve naturally for the decapitation strike. Don't forget if you wanna play some 30K Horus Heresy with us here at Mini Wargaming, anyone here, Go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge for all the details. You'll have all the information you need there. We're in Welland, Ontario, which is 20 minutes away from Niagara Falls. So if Southern Ontario, Northern New York State, it's actually not that far of a drive. Heck, anywhere else even. It's kind of easy to get here, but, uh, you know, we need more heresy guests to get more heresy content. I know you guys are wanting more of it. So if anyone is around, looking forward to it. I don't want to be rusty in the heresy, and I, I want to play you. The guest. I want variety. When's the last time I got to play against Raven Guard? Not in a while, so thank you. Frank for that one. We are deployed and set up for our Iron Path, Iron Tide mission here today. I'll uh, be playing the Word Bears, like I said, on this side of the board. We have a Dawn of War style deployment. So I'll go, I got tacticals here, plasma cannons or warfire cannons, Galvorback with the chaplain, tacticals. And then we got Galvorback chaplain. I'm keeping on like most of my corrupted stuff over here because I got the Maragall over here. Uh, I got Volkite heavy team, tacticals, Maragall. The Mort, I chose to go with the Mortat today instead of my usual uh, Biomancer Psyker, Ashen Circle with him. And then in here we have Mr. Aurelian and his command squad retinue. Heavy weapon last cannon team up there. More tactical marines and nothing in reserve. Now I am playing the Dark Brethren right of war and I have to pick one of Frank's units that didn't infiltrate. Uh, this game as my target of choice, which is unfortunate because pretty much his entire army infiltrated. These are the, are they called deliverers? Yes. We got deliverers there with a librarian. That's a tactical squad. This is a support team with Melta, support with Plasma, tactical over here. And then this is the reconnaissance team. Yes. The Derrideo and the other tactical squad over here. Now the only things that didn't infiltrate, I believe is the Derrideo and the bikes. So I have to pick one of those two as the Dark Brethren target, and I'm just gonna go with the bikes, I guess. Uh, if they, you know, they go to shoot me, maybe I can shoot them back, but they got pretty good range as they are equipped with Volkite. And I apologize, these are actually the spoilers, not tactical squads. That was evident by the chainsaws there. I wasn't really paying attention, apparently. And in reserve, well, you have Korax, his Dark Furies, and what else? A chaplain. And a chaplain. Okay, literally just that unit, understood that nasty little Death Star. Now, like I mentioned in the mission, we have Frank as the attacker here. He will get to dictate who will go, well, he will go first by choosing to be the attacker and no seize the initiative allowed. So it's gonna be Raven Guard turn one and uh, let's see how much damage they can do against my word bearers who are just kind of lined up to throw the body, even though they are Astartes, they're still bodies on objectives. That's the goal. When I play word bearers, I like to go pretty heavy scoring uh, because of their little legion trait makes uh, sense. It just keeps them all stubborn with Vexilla's not so bad And then I like to run Lorgar with a command squad because it he interacts with command squads well and That's just like his thing and uh, scoring as well on him because they're lying So we're gonna try to score this game 
and uh, hold the line and do as much damage to the Raven Guard as we can as we go into Raven Guard turn one. And of course, as per Korax's rules, you get to scout a lot of things. So everything pretty much scouted, just boop, little scout moves, boop, boop. The spoiler stayed still. The Plasma support team, Melta support team are like, we're coming. We're going to do a lot of, we're probably going to die, but they're going to do a lot of damage beforehand. We have our tactical squad over here and the deliverers popping up over here. And then we're going to go on to proper movement for the Raven Guard. And uh, I assume things are going to stay still or get into a better position. But we are going to show you where they end up moving if they end up moving at all. Don't forget that scoring will be at the end of the player turn. So we already have a few of the Raven Guard units that can score on top of objectives to do just that. Movement is done. These tacticals just scooted into the runes a little bit more. The Volkite bikes were over here. They zipped on by. The reconnaissance team naturally stayed still. The Derrideo just like doot, 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 over a wee bit. The despoilers advanced, ran from here to there, cover to cover, love it. And then everything over here just scooted forward. These guys moved forward onto the objective and the deliverers moved up as well. Now one clerical uh, clarification thing on the deliverers, they were part of the initial deployment as well. They did not infiltrate. Uh, that was uh, more of a, I messed up when I said only two things, it was just them. So I could have chosen them as the Dark Brethren, but I didn't want to. I still wanted the Volkite bikes. And so that's about it there. But they did scout, they still scout. And I think that's kind of it. No, the support teams. The support teams just w walked forward in their movement phase as well. And I did react when the Plasma team walked forward. The Galvorback said, yeah, whatever, us too. And they advanced towards them. And that is pretty much it. The spiciest move is this one. <laughs> I like this one a lot. That one's kind of cool. But... I'm gonna have to try and get them because that is my Dark Oath target. Sorry, Dark Brethren target. And, or at least do a damage to him so I don't suffer the, uh, the, 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 the drawback of it. Anyways, we're right to shooting. We're gonna start the shooting phase off with the tactical marines in the ruins firing across at my tactical marines in the ruins. Starting off with the bolters, three of them are rapid firing. Hitting on threes. It is knife fighting, but you have improvisers pretty much everywhere, so you would ignore that. I will not. I gotta remember that for my turn, but I'm sure Frank will help me with that. And what are we wounding on? Four. Boom. Look at that. Three power armor saves. Oh, failing two of them. And then we have a plasma pistol to do. And plasma pistol. Plasma pistol hits on twos because of the improviser. Oh, nice. Hit. Boop. Wounding on. Twos, four is breach. Strength seven, yep. Uh, no breaching though, but a wound. Armor. Power? Yay! Thank you, Phil. And if anyone's curious, the improviser gives you plus one BS, and the sergeant is the one who has it. That's why it's on twos. Uh, I do lose two honored word bearers, though, so we'll also lose a couple guys in the back there that were in line of sight. Uh, the tactical support squad is going to shoot at the Volkite heavy support squad. See, that's not a bad pick there. That's not great. I'm not going to return fire, but I want to. <laughs> uh, do I want to return fire there, or do I want to save it? So I kind of want to save it against these guys, but dang. I'm not going to all the same. I'll eat it. The eight, four guys who are in rapid fire range. On threes, and then the sergeant will be hitting on twos. You can just roll these two for the sergeant because he's got the fancy visor. Nice. That was, those are all hits. Twos to wound. Uh, twos to wound, four to reach. Reaching. And the one off the table. Pretty good roll overall. We got everything wounds through four breaches. I'll do the power armor saves first. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, wow. Can I get that on my cover? <laughs> it's like a six up cover because of the crater. Uh, all right, well, let's see how many six up saves I make. None, four guys die. I'll keep the sergeant alive and that'll be a panic for later. Next up, we're gonna do the Melta support squad into my command squad, which is kind of good because I don't think any of them are in range of Lorgar. So these are gonna go right through the command squad. This is where I typically bring a Biomancer to react, shoot and throw up the power, but I went with the Mortat instead today to try out a little different. So hopefully I don't lose too many command squad members to this. Arjun first. Plasma pistol hitting on twos. That's a five, that hits. And two to wound. Two wounds on twos, breaches on fours. That's a wound, no breach though. Two up save. We're good on that, we got Artificer Armor. The Melta guns on. More Melta guns on threes. Threes! We got two hits so far, and the third one, no, all right. Rerolling the ones because you have a character. Ah, yes, preferred enemy, we got decapitation strike. Whoop. And that's a hit. Who's to wound? Rerolling ones because of preferred enemy. Ah, re the one. We got two wounds so far, three of them, excellent. That's unfortunately three dead for the Melta guys there, but that is okay. We'll lose you. I'm just gonna lose, I always put in 
Just a couple of chain swords in there just to eat up the first few wounds. That's one, two chain swords. Again, yeah, Lorgar's a little too far away there. So I'll take it on this power sword because I don't have any more chain swords. Oof, that's a hard reach. I got a lot of crap in my way. Hey, there we go. Moving on, this tactical squad has four bolters in range at my tactical squad. And threes! One miss. And there's no character in there. So these are gonna be wounding on fours. Why, thank you for the three wounds. Variety of power armor in there, we're all good. Moving on to this side of the table, back to the jet bikes. They are gonna fire their Volkite up at my plasma cannons who will return fire back at you. I'm <laughs> yeah, we gotta do the sergeant separate. He's got the improviser. Uh, and the uh, guns down below are a little different than their guns on top, but they got firing protocol too, so they're good to go. Yeah, we'll do the sergeant first. Somewhere around here works. This is his main gun. He's hitting on twos. Yeah. No characters in there, so the ones do man. Rolling the other weapon he's equipped with. This is his main Volkite gun. Lots of shots. Draw strength six, so twos to wound. No relevant AP, only one fail in there. All right, to clarify, that was the entire squad finishing their shots off there. Not just the sergeant, but we did him first. Hurry up saves. You are gonna kill one and deflagrate one. Good wound? You better believe it does. And it kills one more. I'll kill this guy and this guy, I'll say. Sergeant's in the middle there with the augury scanner. Or sorry, the augury scanner's behind him. And these are their pistols. The sergeant hits on twos. Boom, 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 couple good start, and the rest are on threes. Oh, just one miss overall. And threes to wound. These, are, these ones are in strength five. And one fail, just four wounds. Three ups! One more dies, one more deflagrate. One it, on three. Yes, it works, and I don't save it, nice, killed four. Deflagrate worked, we'll kill the augury scanner and the regular guy leaving just a sergeant, but they all do get to return fire. And they're gonna just draw line of sight to this guy here. That's the only one they can clearly see. They can see a couple of the other ones, but I'll just keep it easy on myself and fire at him. I'm gonna aim it essentially right here. So we're looking for direct hits here to get a couple bikes hit. But I got five of them to try this with. Fighting's gonna make it just a little bit more difficult to hit. So that's two hits on the first one. Uh, the second one, that's off. That's gonna hit around here. And... That will be a direct hit because it's minus three. It'll be four hits out of the three Ooh. shots. Oop, five, six hits. Last one, another direct hit. Excellent. So that'll be eight hits and one went a little wild. The bikes are only T4, so these are wounding them on twos, breaching four up. Uh, everything wounds and five of them are breaching. Let's do the three regular armor saves first and then we'll have five breaches. Doesn't really change too much. Boom, boom, boom. You're good on that. And then the five breaches, you'll get five of cover for the ruins there as I'm shooting down and through them. Uh, I do three damage, but because they moved, they get shrouding six up to try and mitigate one of these. It does. We do kill one of the bikes though. And I definitely owe you a leadership later. <laughs> that's because the, uh, the Raven Guard rule, and that's for the bikes one specifically. When they move, they get some shrouding. And that'll be for his leadership later. Check quickly, because it's the Nemesis Bolter that gives them sniper. Yeah. We're going to go with the recon team. They have Nemesis Bolters. They're going to put shots into the Galvor back and hopefully ping a lot of those off onto my chaplain. They're all going to put shots into that unit, and they're all going to try and kill the chaplain off. So let's see how many hits you get. First guy on a two. She hits on a two. And then the rest are on threes. Not bad. A reroll for precision, or sorry, uh, preferred enemy, because he is a character. They're all threes to wound, rerolling ones for preferred enemy. Again for the red war. Reroll. Oh wait, nice, three rending. Three rends and four wounds. I'll do these two at a time on him, two ups, just to get through his armor. He's okay, and then he's probably gonna die. He refractor field, two at a time. Oh. Oh, he dies. He's only got two wounds. He's a basic guy. Pop, 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 pop. One of the last things to fire is the Derrideo. What are you feeling? Uh, it'll go over there with the Mar Margol and the... Oh, the Galvor the, back, the in Galvor the back in the tacticals. Gotcha. We're shooting right across the table. Big old wide open shot. They're all lined up for it. They're ready to eat plasma in the face. Second thought, he doesn't have a way to ignore the night fighting uh, range restriction. So he's going to just sit pretty right there, ready to shoot the first thing that comes in the line of sight for him. Then we have one more thing to resolve. That is over here on the Deliverers. They have a Biomancer in there. They're, he's going to shoot and cast the, uh, what the heck's it called? Biomantic Invigoration? Gives him more stats, strength, and toughness. And we're going to try that out over here. We pass. We'll give them plus one strength and toughness. And I believe you said they're battle hardened? Yes. Yes. All right. Good, good, good. Well, that will be it for shooting. I have a few leaderships I got to roll up here. Start with this lad here, it is night fighting, so he's afraid. He is gonna boogie woogie and run away. Ooh, he's going far, he's probably off the table actually. Granted, 
he can see Lorgar, so he, his leadership goes to 10, and then knife fighting down at 9. And uh, if that's not how it works, well, that's how I'm going to play it anyways, because it's more fun. I like when things happen. He would have been leadership 10, knife fighting makes it 9. And 10 inches doesn't actually take him off the board, because he's deployed on the line, so he'll be right here. Pretty close to the edge, though. Two inches away from it. I owe you another one. Oops. Let's go over here. Can't see Lorgar. He is the sergeant, though, but he fails because I took down to seven for knife fighting. He's gonna boogie nine. It's five down, he'll go four across. He jumps down, boop, and scoots a little bit here, and we've lost two of our heavy weapon teams, but that's okay. And that will be the morale there. I assume there's no charging. So we're gonna go right to scoring, and you are on one objective, so on a four up, you'll get a victory point as the attacker. Good start, you get one victory point there for securing that objective. And there was one more you're on, this one over here. On a four up, you get another one. No, one victory point ain't bad though, and a pretty good initial hit. Not the best turn I've ever had, but, well, it's gonna be rough all the same. We're gonna try and rally these Dumbos here. Try, uh, nine? Can't see Lorgar anymore, so no. <laughs> Uh-oh, bye-bye. Ooh, never could see Lorgar, but you're good. Let's go ahead and just, boop. Go that way, I guess, for now. Then I can proceed with the rest of my moves. Generally, just the tacticals are gonna keep pushing. I'd like to sit there in Fury. It's a little tempting. I might still, but these guys are definitely gonna move up towards this objective. I do gotta kill them for a Dark Favor, which will help against Korax and the Dark Furies when they show up. All of this stuff is just gonna move forward, and if there's any reactions, I'll show you that. Lorgar and his unit are going to push towards this objective because they're scoring. But at the same time, they're gonna push up because I do need to make my way towards that objective eventually. So in general, all the word bears are gonna move and I'll show you where they end up afterwards and how the reactions end up. And movement is complete. I opted to stay still with them because I want to fear into the bikes in case I need it. These tacticals move forward and so did the Galvorback. Once the Galvorback moved, they ended up uh, withdrawing away from the Galvorback naturally. But I got last cannons in range to fire at them, so it should be okay. These guys moved forward and so did these tacticals. Unfortunately, these tacticals that were here had to advance to get in range of the objective. And it was like only an inch advance they needed to. That's how close they were to the objective. Over here, uh, we had our Ashen Circle activate their jump axe boosh, and jump up and over this way to, well, first the Maragall move to make that actual space. And then I figured out where they needed because I want to put pressure on the Despoilers. Last Cannon has naturally stayed still in the building here. Lorgar and his unit moved forward. No real reactions. And then, oh, I got the spoilers reacted earlier, but I'll explain that later. And then these tacticals are staying still because I'm too afraid to get close to the deliverers over here because they're kind of nasty. I'm going to hold them back for later. Uh, they can just scoot up on this objective once this is all dealt with. Over here, the Galvorback moved up. That's when the despoil. that's why the despoilers are, uh, despoilers are over there. And then all of this moved forward to go and try and deal with them. That'll be it for moving. And I'm going to go right to shooting. I'm going to start with some basic stuff. These Legionnaires are going to Fury the Legion into those bikes. It's going to eat it, no reaction here. These are half the Bolter shots because of Fury of the Legion and Rapid Fire. Threes to hit, oh, fours to hit actually because of Knife Fighting, gotta remember that. And the Wound Rolls, three so far. And second volley, ooh, much more hits that time. And then we're going to have uh, three more wounds. We have Artifice around the Sergeant, so we're going to do him two at a time. He's good. Uh, good. Good. That's it. Oh, it mattered for the last one wound. These tacticals are going to put shots into them, but they're just, they should be just like 10 shots or something. All right, here's all the bolters here. Four is to hit, and this is all the shots. And four is to wound, same idea, three of them. Well, I want to do two at a time for the sergeant. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Double, double six, nice. And oh, nice, saved him again. That's worth there. And I'm going to go with our Laz cannons over here, firing down at those bikes. I got to... Do at least some damage, ideally kill them. Granted, only this last cannon is out of range, so it'll be four shots. Only hitting on fours, though. These are fours to hit because of knife fighting. They have augury scanners, that's why they could shoot more than 24. Hey! Ah, unfortunately, only one hit. Two to wound, though. And you have shrouding. And cover for models in the way. So we'll do the cover first. Boom, boom, boom. No, and then a shroud. Raven Guard stuff. Three. We got one damage on you. Huzzah. It's instant death. It would kill uh, whoever you want, really. Or maybe the sergeant technically has to take it. I can't remember. Haven't played Heresy in a while. We got the sergeant left over there. Uh, for the rest of my shooting, this is all resolved. Don't really 
care to shoot. Well, they ran. I'm not going to shoot them. Margal could fire. This guy could fire. So I'm going to fire this squad next. The, they're all going to fire at the despoilers. But I don't know if the Mortad has rain. Ah, the Akitic Hand Flamers are torrent. I'll check them first, then do the Mortad. Use the shrouding reaction, the evasion reaction on them there. Uh, I am going to just do... Uh, it's kind of rough because like I can only really kill four of the models anyway. So I will do... I'm just going to do the plasma. I'm going to save myself the time firing their stupid flamers and just do the uh, warp fire pistols. Because all of them can only really kill four models. So it doesn't really matter. The hand flamers have like Torrent 6. So like a Torrent to there. And I hit like four dudes. And that's all the warp fire guy can kill anyway. So might as well quickly resolve him. Plus his weapons have pinning. I'm just going to do all of his pistol shots. Now, because they don't get hot, I don't have to worry about the chain fire rule. That's the nice thing about the Word Bearer Mortat. These just hit on threes because of night fighting. Oh, that's a lot of misses though, crap. Nasty. All right, these are twos to wound. Uh, so three breaches and two saves. Do the breaches first. You got shrouding. Boop, 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 boop. Three, six, and uh, two. So that's two dead. And then you have just a couple regular saves you can put on whomever you like. Sergeant in the middle, I assume, there. Ah, uh, two more. Two more? Yeah. yeah Sergeant will take them. Twos! Hey, no ones. Excellent. Boom, boom. So I only kill... Was it two of them? Yeah, yeah. two of them die. Boom, boom. Those two there. Uh, that, that stupid hand flamers. I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> I'll save myself the energy on it. Hate the hate them anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the pinning check because his weapons are pinning. See if you are pinned or not. Oh, no, you're good on the double one for sure. Then the last thing I'll fire is I'm gonna try some Fury of the Legion from here into those Terminators and see what I can accomplish. Uh, let's go. These are only nine are in line of sight. Have line of sight, so fours to hit. We got four hits on the first volley. Fury is two shots. Uh, oh, nice. Actually, these are all the hits then, including the first pool. Do you have the Biomancy power on them? Their toughness, five. Didn't matter. I got five wounds anyways. All two up saves. I'll do one, two damage. I kill one. Look at that. The one guy over there dies. Boom. He eats a lot of bolt arounds and goes down. I think that'll be it for shooting. I'm going to look at Lorgar's stuff here. I got to figure him out. There's no real point in doing any of Lorgar's powers right now. I don't care about precision shots or strikes or thaumaturgy healing or the bad thaumaturgy weapons. So... I think I will simply just shoot at the unit of Terminators with Lorgar and his unit. I'll do Lorgar first, though, and then I'll do... They're all bolters, because they're all veterans with Rulon. So one, two, three, four, five, six bolters. I'll see how many are rapid-firing, then I'll figure out Lorgar's weapon. But I'll do the bolters first. These are all the shots. <laughs> nice. Hang on. These three sixes. One wounding hit. And what's it going to be? Not... Oh, one damage. Nice. <laughs> Which one would you like it to be? That one over there? Eat that, Terminator. I will fire devotion. Hitting on that. Wounding on not that. Very correction. It's a graviton pulse weapon. So any non-vehicle model has to do a toughness check. That one I rolled would have been the toughness check uh, for Franks, which means he passes. So it's it's all good there. Something like that. It's not a blast weapon either. It's a weird gun. I'm not firing it again. <laughs> I'm done with that. I should have never strayed from the holy bolter. Okay. Well, let's go to charging. But first. A morale check on the bike, because uh, lost half its unit. Bam, 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 seven is good. Sticking around. We're gonna go right to charging. Galvar back, charging the bike. We'll try to at least. Can they see Lorgar? Probably not, but they are fast enough to get plus one anyways. Hey, they're gonna roll a nine. And does make it in, and they could see Lorgar, so technically be a 10 inch, well, I mean, might I say technically a 10 inch charge, I have to take the 10. Lorgar gives him plus one. So we're gonna end up like that, and Frank is gonna overwatch. I know it's before I move, but it doesn't change anything. Hitting on twos because of the improviser. Boom, 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 boom. This is his main gun. And then, oh, nice. Beast to wound the Galvor back. Nice, not bad. And then go ahead and roll the uh, other gun up as well. Ah, I guess I'll do this first. You're right, different strength. Three ups. Uh, feel no pain. We're good. And his pistol gun thing. Uh, both hit. And force to four. wound. Yeah, force. Hey, one more. And it's going to be a good save. Move along to this. We'll discharge here into the plasma, and look at that. I don't think they can see Lorgar, but if they can, they go seven. Just like that. Then the Mara Gull, who I realized they didn't fire. I didn't think I needed it. It's just gonna, I didn't want to return fire at the time either. Uh, I'm gonna charge them. Oh, fancy roll. Can't do much with it though, naturally. Uh, does he have Hammer of Wrath? I can't remember. Man, it's been a while. And then we're gonna move along to, hmm. Well, I'm gonna attempt to charge with Lorgar and his unit. Over to these guys. It's gonna be kind of difficult, but we're gonna try. An eight, because they can see themselves, is probably not gonna cut it. Uh, we measured it earlier, it's a nine. But close though, close. 
do still surge towards our doom, though. And I got a, one thing that people might not be aware of. The Raven Guard Rate of War Decapitation Strike awards a two extra victory points. So this game, if Korak shows up and charges and I lose Lorga, might be immediately over. But sometimes that could be the heresy. I am going to proceed to combat. I'm just going to immediately fight over here. The Galvorback definitely have initiative over random bike sergeant. So you'll go there. You'll go there, the rest will try their best. I'll pile in, actually the Power Fist would pile in later, so he probably wouldn't even get the chance to pile in, realistically. Four of them are gonna attack though with their Tainted Claws. They have Rage 2, which means they got lots of attacks here. These are hitting on threes because of weapon skill five. No rerolls, because you sniped my Chaplain out of here, but that's a damn good roll. 17 hits, one six will do it. There we go, instant death and rending. And we got him, everyone. I will consolidate, I guess. Right here. What is up, my friends in ruins? Good to see you. Good to see you. And we'll 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 come for some hugs soon. That will give me a dark favor point, which I must immediately allocate to a unit, and that'll naturally be Lorgar and his retinue. You immediately apply the dark favor, but you don't pick a new target until the end of the turn. Otherwise, it'd be oh, okay. That's my target. They're dead. Lorgar gets buffed. That's my new target. They're probably dead. Lorgar gets buffed. Oh, like, how did this happen? Though. What I was trying to line up there, oh, no, never mind, it wouldn't work out that way. If I got Dark Favor, I need two Dark Favor on him for him to be strength 10. Uh, we're getting there though. So if anyone's unfamiliar with the word bears, it's um, the favor of the Dark Gods for killing the, the appointed unit. It increases their weapon skill, strength, and movement characteristic by one, I believe. We'll make the unit movement eight. So they'll get bonuses to charge now. And that can stack up to three times. And then I have to start picking something else. But I'll probably pick something else after two stacks. Two stacks on them is good enough. You don't need three. We can go on to this fight over here. Uh, no piling in because we're already base contact everywhere. I'll start with the Gal Vorback with their rending claws, and that'll probably be enough. 20 attacks again. And then then the Chaplain, and then the Power Fist. Well, then you, then the Power Fist. It's to hit. Whoop. The Chaplain, because not dead yet. And three to wound. Uh, every six is a dead guy. Boom, boom, boom. And then you, oh, actually, these are all AP3, so they're all dead. <laughs> Unless we have Artificer Armor. I do. All right, well then that kills two regular guys, and then this will kill two more regular guys. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two up saves to make. This is five eyes. And then you got him. Cut them all up. And once the way is clear, we've already consolidated, and that'll help us secure that objective. And then we get to see what the Margal's capable of. He does have Rampage, which will help here. Uh, though, and it's more of a it's more of a Luca rule, but I like to play Dreadnoughts as uh, like bulky five essentially. Uh, so you can't like they just can't count as one model while outnumbering anything. They have to actually be fighting something relatively big to be outnumbered. I know, I know, Luca, you make up too many rules that hurt yourself, but it's all in the name of the fun of the game. It breaks it, it, it bothers me fundamentally that they don't have something like that. Anyways, he's got three attacks normally, and he charged. He's gonna hit on threes. Don't whiff it. Well, it's a good start to whiffing it. And wound on twos. And these are just two, two dead guys. Boom, boom, boom. And you get to pile in and fight me back. See if your lightning claw on the sergeant can do anything. Sitting on fives. That's a good start. And... Uh, rending on a six, but shred. Yeah. Uh, no wound there, but the shred? Uh, no. And then we have two regular dudes. Sitting on fives. Fives and sixes. Five? Sixes. No. And then leadership minus two. Technically three because I'm corrupted, but uh, you fail because of minus three because he causes fear. We are going to break. I am not going to catch you and you just run 2d6 inches away. Get out of here, cowards. They're going to break. That 10 works for me. Chasing them down. That will conclude my turn. There's not much else to do here. I did not make the charge of Lorgar and his unit, but I do get to pick a new unit to try and bully off the table here and score these objectives. So I have scoring on this objective. Again, because I'm the defender, I get plus two to this roll. So that's, well, didn't need, didn't need the plus two there. And that one works as well. That's two victory points. However, Lorgar is a scoring unit because of the command squad. Ooh, three victory points. We got a strong lead here. I want to say the support squad there. They're kind of, uh, they're in a spot. They got a rally. They can't move too far. So why not? I like them. With that in mind, we're going to go to turn two of four, potentially five, for the Raven Guard. We're going to see some maybe reserves coming in. All right, Frank, are you ready to see if Korax shows up? Hopefully he does. Yeah, all right, let's see. Three up. Yep, uh, mm. but he is not coming in. No, there's no re. Oh, we have rerolls for the scatter, not for his reserves yet, eh? 
Ooh, that's kind of spicy. You got one more turn to deal with my forces. You hit me kind of hard though, so you can probably hit me pretty hard again. I miss my uh, cha <laughs> I miss my chaplain over here. We got the deliverers coming in here. They do lose their biomancer power for now, but I assume they're gonna get it back very quickly. We're gonna show you where they end up. In fact, we're gonna move pretty much all of this stuff here, then we're gonna show you where it ends up and if there's any reactions. Well, to no surprise, the Deliverers are coming up towards Lorgar and his command squad. The Tacticals are pushing up as well. I'm not going to react to that. Uh, before showing other things, we do have to roll for Night Fighting to see if we have one more turn of Misery. We do! More Night Fighting to come! And we do have to see if your Melta Support Squad rallies. Uh, six? Mm. They get three rally. Because you, you ignore the Night Fighting, but not the Corrupted. But yeah, you're good. You do rally. So they get to do a little bit of a move. And they can snap fire this turn. If anyone didn't notice, these guys are creeping up around the corner. I am going to react to them and withdraw with them. We go just a little bit of a scoot, but not a whole lot of it. And over here, our little Derradeo friend would love to get some shots in. So he's scooting up the board. He doesn't care about knife fighting anymore. He's within 24. I assume they're staying still to Fury. And they're going to stay still because uh, the snipers are heavy. And uh, I think that's it, right? Yep. Uh, where do you want to start shooting? If you know. And we are going to figure this out by going to the tactical squad over here, right beside the deliverers, and they're going to fire their bolt guns up at the, ha the not, not Havocs, the heavy support team with Laz Cannon, which will be seven bolt gun shots. The plasma is not going to be in range, and these guys don't have line of sight through this pillar. And we forgot to note, this is where, when the Melta team rallied, they did their little scoot this way. Seven shots hitting on three is at the heavy support. Yeah. I will not be returning fire or anything like that here. Three hits and fours to wound. One. When I have a three up save, we're good. Power armor protects, baby. Uh, go ahead and do the Biomancer power here before we forget. We're gonna push it naturally. That is perfect. That is exactly what you want. They're strong! That marker there just so we remember. And then we move on to the other Derideo things. Derideo is going to fire all of its guns at the tactical squad. Ooh. <laughs> Kept a good solid blast formation. So you should be able to get a pretty good shot if you put it on his yeah, head. Yeah, he's gonna do the big blast. That is gonna be a perfect hit there. Hoy, we do scatter. You only BS3 technically, so maybe we'll just get a massive scatter. I lie, the Derrida is BS5 based like all the other Dreadnoughts, of course. So he will scatter only uh, BS4. Oh, direct hit! That is 10 hits, baby! Uh, do you have to roll for Gets Hot on that thing or is it ignore it? I do have to roll Gets Hot. Roll me a D6 then there, Frank. You're good. Twos to wound, fours are gonna kill guys. I'm gonna evade this, I guess, because you don't have much more shooting, I think. It's four, three that are gonna have to evade, and then five are armor saves, because it's still, it's not AP3, it's still AP4 base. And six, I know how to count, I promise. <laughs> See if my power armor can protect, it does. Oh, and then, then these will just go right to shrouds, because I don't have any cover or anything where I am. All right, wiggle, you idiots. Wiggle for Largar, you do, to die. So far, we have the little missiles still. Lose you and you. The blast overshot a little bit, they dodged forward. Or, you know, they just took it on their chest like the like the Marines they are, and the power armor protected them. They they really, really, really believed in their power armor, let me tell you. What do we got going on here? The missiles? Uh, three shots from the missile launcher. Two! Threes, actually, I guess. Threes. And one miss, and twos. To Strength six. Oh, well, still twos. Uh, AP. AP three. Oh, that's two dead guys. Well, I got the evasion. All right, they see the missiles coming. They calculate that this is going to penetrate their armor, and they dodge. No, they don't. They, they, they think that this is also going to bounce off their power armor, and they are disgustingly wrong. That'll be a leadership check for them. We'll be pinning as well. I'm going to resolve that. They're good on the pin, and we have the heavy bolter to shoot. He's got it right in his chest there. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, one reroll, because it's night fighting. Okay, three hits that are wounding on threes. That is three of them. Oh, yeah! Dodge! Yeah! Next, we're going to fire your recon team. Oh, it's gonna be hard to get the shot over here, but it's gonna be into my heavy weapons on that building. Uh, my last cannons on the upper level. We can kill up to three of them. Get some cool across the table fire here. And the sergeant hits on a two because he's got the the vision, the eyeballs, the tech. Everyone else is a three because they don't care about knife fighting. Couple misses, not bad. I don't have a character there, so no rerolls. But overall, pretty good. These are wounding on threes. threes yeah. Rending on fives. Perfect. Well. Pretty much all wound, a couple fails, and what is that, three rends? Yeah, three and three, easy enough. Now, most of these shots are being going shooting through the ruins, so there'll be some five of cover. Do the three no AP saves first. Uh, that is one dead guy. And then these are gonna be five of cover saves. All three of them are dead. 
Uh, the sergeant's the one kneeling, and I always put the augury scanner beside him. So these guys are dead. But that's a leadership check. I'll just do the leadership now. Uh, they do pass because Lorgar makes them 10, but knife fighting. Into the... Oh yeah, we got the Fury of the Legion over here. Since I did the leadership over on the other side, I'll do, get this one out of the way as well, because nothing else is gonna fire at them. Oh no! But they do have a Vexilla, so they're gonna just, uh, I think it's just D6. Eh, five ain't bad. Keep it on them, just to remember I have to rally these idiots who are running away. Come on, Lorgar is here, you guys gotta hold. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and do a Nasty Fury. This tactical squad is gonna fire into the Oh, this, this one. Squad. Do you wanna do the Plasma, plasma we'll Pistol first? We'll do the first? Plasma Pistol first. Is in range and hitting on a two. Eight. Oh, <laughs> womp womp. Hey, it's, it gets hot. Yeah, do an armor gets... save. Uh, two up save because he's got artifice armor. Can you roll two ones for me? No, that's fine. And then all the other guys are one guy. One of those guys looks like he's rapid firing, and the rest will have two shots for Fury. But that one guy will have three. And yeah, two guys are in rapid fire. That means there's gonna be 20 shots because of Fury of the Legion. Hitting on threes. threes. Yeah, they don't care what knife fighting. That's a damn good roll. Technically, these this is 19 dice. Roll the 20th. Reroll that for the 20th. <laughs> oh, I still miss. Okay. And fours. Leave my tacticals alone, I need them to win. Can I fail eight saves here? I'll fail three, which is good enough for a morale check. Which I'll just go ahead and do right now, because that's the last thing to fire. Please, don't run! Uh, knife fighting? They do. <laughs> I freaking love knife fighting. I, I, I say that without sarcasm. I think it's probably one of the best things they did to the... Ha Heresy 2.0 has its problems. Knife fighting is, in my opinion, one of the better elements. Because it. I love morale things, and it forces a lot more morale things. Now, granted, if you're ignoring all the mechanics, then there's, you know, where's the fun in ignoring the mechanics? Look at me suffer! We can suffer together. Uh, I'm gonna boogie three inches. Boom, that's where they're gonna run with their three inch move. I gotta mark them that I gotta rally them. And I only make fun of Frank a little bit. It makes sense that the Raven Guard, this, the, you know, the cloak and dagger, the clandestine forces of the Imperium should probably have war gear that allows them to operate especially good under cover of darkness. As I said at the end of the shooting phase, I lied. I forgot this squad over here gets the snap fire. So we're gonna do two melt the snap fires into Lorgar's command squad. Boo boo boo. Uh, yeah, I'll let you reroll that bad boy. Uh, no, and do you have to shoot the plasma pistol too? Is it unless it's not in range? I'll just roll it and we'll see. Oh, it hits and does it wound? I'm gonna put it on Lorgar anyways, probably. It does. It's I'm gonna put this. Lorgar, he takes a wound. Okay, you know what? It would make more sense to put that on a command squad, but funny enough, Lorgar is the only one within 12 of him. That guy's too far away, so Lorgar has to take that wound like a fool. Imagine the outcome of the game if that snap fire causing this wound allows Korax to sweep in and deal just enough damage to Lorgar to win the game. That'd be kind of cool. Anyways, that is it for the shooting phase. I already did all the morale. We can go to charging now. Boom, boom, boom. Charging in over here. I'm probably not going to react. An eight. Perfect. Bring it on. All right, that's them making it in there. I'm not going to react because it's knife fighting. I'm too afraid to hold. So we'll be fine here. If anything, we'll just I'll have to deal with them later on these guys. And the deliverers are going to charge Lorgar in the command squad. This one I will hold the line against only because. Oh, you know what? That one I will. I will. What's it called? Um, Overwatch. I'll overwatch over there. I can only see one model, though. And uh, I'm, I'm only going to do because I got two assault phase reactions. But I'll hold the line here. What do you get? Welcome to the fight. And that's them charging in. Uh, do they have Hammer of Wrath as a rule as deliverance? Uh, they might. Let's check that out. And then moving on over here, I only could see the Vexilla, so if I kill anyone, it's him that dies. Could have been 18 shots for rapid firing. Uh, still four stick because it's spooky scary out. Fours! Uh, four of them. And that guy make three saves. He's the only one who could eat a round to the face. Uh, he does too, in fact, but he just he just dies twice because he's twice the idiot. Oh, but uh, yeah, he, they, these guys would have made it with an eight because they were still with an eight. He was within seven. They were close behind. They, they would just go base contact instead. It's just a problem. He was blocking them as well. As for charging, we're going to go ahead and pile in here. Everyone's good to swing here. Anything fancy? Like, let's see, that guy's got a claws. He's got a lightning claw. Everybody else has a chainsword. Nah, right, we'll do Mr. Claw first, I guess. Three attacks on the sergeant for charging. His uh, claws are specialist weapons. Sitting on fours. Uh, one hit. All right, excellent start. Strength five. This is the fancy Raven Guard, Raven Guard one. Uh, strength four, shred, but it rends on sixes. Oh, fair. Okay. A reroll. And... Okay, then we just have a bunch of chainsword. Just a normal rending claw. We got three, six guys attacking. Should be 18 attacks. What are they two attacks base? Uh, they're one attack base, plus gotcha. one for charging, plus one for two weapons. They had like a rule where they're bullies or something. Uh, on fall 
The units that are pinned are falling back. That's what it was. Fours to hit with all the chain swords. E excellent. Fours to wound, but we have shred. We were able to fend off some of the attacks, but not enough. So far, six wounds and the reroll from the chain sword shred. Uh, only three fails. Excellent. These are all three up saves. I owe you eight. Just a bunch of three ups. You're gonna cut down two of my guys. Let's lose you and you, cause you kinda have to die, ish. And then I will pile in and, oh, they get to fight though, same initiative. They would have piled in and around. I'm just, well, whatever, it doesn't really matter. All right, that is all my pile-ins. There's a guy there and a guy there, technically. That's why he's standing over here like a fool. And uh, I just forgot to pile in. Anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 attacks, cause of my sergeant right there. Four is to hit. Not a great start. Five hit. That's actually, that's pretty close to average. And I wound three times. No shred though. Can you lose two models for me? <laughs> I have the sergeant who has the artificer on Oh yes, one at a time on him then. Boom, nada, nada. Sorry, the third wound does fail. Kills off the sergeant. Ah, forgot there was three. Well, isn't that funny? I still lose. I got a Vexilla though. The plus one of my combat res, I believe. I gotta double check that. It's a tie combat, but I will note that I haven't forgot about Lorgar's rule. If they can draw a line of sight to him, they get plus one combat res, but they can't see him. He's too, he's too deep up on in there. Almost though, very close. Uh, that just means we're gonna move together. Then we got a much, much more interesting fight to resolve over here. Uh, Lorgar will go first, and uh, I'm gonna do his attacks. So we got weapon skills seven on Lorgar here because of the dark favor, and these are hitting on threes. Attacking into the deliverers. deliverers. Uh, yo, uh, he gets the extra attack for having a Lumen Arm and uh, Devotion, I believe it's called. No reroll. I don't think it's Mastercrafted. Oh, I'm so sorry. Of course it's Mastercrafted. It was made by Ferris Manus. Yeah, thank you, Ferris. These are twos to wound with Brutal 2. Because uh, he's strength, I think, nine right now. Yes. Now, he has a Primar. He has to choose where these wounds go. And the librarian is an eligible target for where he is, so he'll take them one at a time until he's dead, which should be a refractor field save. So the first one, it'd be brutal too, so... He's currently toughness five, because it affects the whole unit. Yes, that's right. You're not going to instantly die then. So, But it is brutal too, so you got two at a time for each wound. Uh, he t takes one of them, and then the next one will kill him. And then that was two of them? He'll die to... He eats four attack. Well, he'll eat, yeah, four of the damage. And then you just do... I don't really care. Uh, this guy... We'll take it because he's wounded, whatever. Keep it nice and even. <laughs> Not play outside of the box too much here. So okay. he'll die. And then there's one other random Terminator who I do not care about. We'll take it, the next one. And unfortunately die as well because Frank can't roll saves, apparently. Uh, boom, I'll let you pick. There you go. I believe the... What's the initiative of your guys? Uh, they're initiative four. Uh, command squad's probably also four. So it's both of us. All right, we'll get yours out of the way first, and uh, we'll figure this they out. They have four attacks each because you did the hold the line. And then yeah. Because they have two base and then two lightning claws, and the sergeant has plus one. Right. It's going to be nasty, though, because the dark favor makes the unit weapon skill six. Here's the first volume of attacks. There's still a couple more guys to attack with, including the sergeant. So these are fives to hit, but we're rolling ones because of preferred enemy. One hit so far, plus the rerolls. One more hit there. And the rest of the attacks. Fives, rerolling ones. Two more hits and a reroll for that one. Alrighty. And then these are all. Strength five because of the. Oh, the fancy librarian. Class. Three. Oh, that's right. Strength five because librarian. So threes to wound with shred. Nice. I see the L wound. Uh, they're rending six up? Rending five up. Five up, perfect. Okay, well that is gonna go right through my armor and then a bunch of, a bunch of saves. Six saves and four at AP2. I'll be fun, I'll put them on the command squad. So here's the command squad saves. That was a drop die. Two up save on them because they have artificer armor. And then these are feel no pains because they don't have anything else. I know people keep giving me crap bringing boarding shields, but that's not WYSIWYG, dude. I don't got those models. Uh, so one makes it and then one dies and one takes the wound because they're two wounds each. But those who die, if I choose these ones, which I will, will fight at the same time. This guy will die, I guess. And then this guy will take a wound. Gonna be one, two, three, four power swords and then the two power fists over there later. That guy wounded and remove him. It's 12 attacks with their power swords. Threes to hit because they got a good weapon skill, but uh, their strength is lacking. Fives to wound. Uh, one rend and two two ups. Two two ups. No two two ups. A okay and then a rend. Oh, good, nice. 
and then I remove my guys already, and then I'll do my two power fists. There we go. That should be two attacks per guy. Threes and twos, but no instant death because you are toughness five for now. Twos. Two invulnerable saves. Invulns. Ah, oh, it kills one more guy. Who's it gonna be? Ah, oh, we definitely lost that combat, but you are, they're stubborn, they're specifically stubborn, right? Yes. All right, that's, that'll counteract any fear I have nearby. Boom, but they break. I assume because they're not 10. I believe not. All right, so we will go for some sweeps. They're stubborn nine, unfortunately. If I was smart, I would have had Lorgar kill the sergeant, but I got lucky and Frank rolled a bad leadership. So I'm gonna do my crusader sweep. I got a six, which means Lorgar catches them and they are swept and we can consolidate. That's how five terminators die. Uh, we are gonna just consolidate towards the next target, I suppose. All right, well, that was an unfortunate outcome. I was, the, the plan there for them was just to tie up Lorgar, which as stubborn, you would typically expect to work, but sometimes the dice uh, deny you, much like my poor army's been running all game. Today is a morale game. Today is uh, gonna be decided by that. This is already done. That should be the end of the turn and you, get to, I believe I don't deny this objective. This one's all of you. So you get to roll for this one on a four up. You get a victory point. That's good. That's a victory point. Do you have another one going right now? Uh, would this one count? Yes, it does. Absolutely. And one more four up. Oh, it's one more point for the Raven Guard though. That will conclude the top of turn two. We're gonna go to the bottom of turn two here. The game is currently tied for the Raven Guard. But again, as a reminder, decapitation strike, Lorgar dead. Boom, that's game over. Absolutely. Start this off by trying to rally my tacticals here. They are gonna rally and they are not going to rally. They're gonna keep running. They got shot by bolters. They did not like that. They regroup and with their regroup move, they are unfortunately unable to get back onto the objective because they're barely in range before and they ran five inches away. The Vexilla didn't help as much as I would have liked it to. But you can regroup and immediately score again, but in this case, not quite close enough. These guys, unfortunately, are stepping ever closer towards the edge of the board and further away from the victory points. We're gonna have this guy advance. He's just gonna climb back up here and uh, just uh, get into a position to shoot again later, but he can't shoot this turn. The Gal Vorback are not gonna move. And over to here. Hmm. I kinda wanna help, my, help out the tacticals, but I don't know the path I want to go about, I think my best bet are these guys coming in to help them out and um, and then having them move along or they can go for the Dreadnought or something. Do that, these guys are gonna come this way, he's gonna push up that way and then them, I don't know. They're gonna jump over there and that's where they end up, they end up uh, withdrawing away from the Maragall. And then one thing I want to point out here is because I couldn't get on the objective, I forgot to record, they're just gonna stay back and spread out. Instead, instead of moving forward towards the objective, they just spread out. And the last thing to move will be these guys. Sorry, they're gonna just move up to the objective. Our Gaul moved up and then Lorgar and his unit creeped up and around and forced these guys to, uh, well, technically they moved and forced the withdrawal because Lorgar would have trapped them in where they were. And then Lorgar's unit moves up to surround them because I want to put pressure on this objective as well. Gotta get as many VPs as I can before Mr. Korax comes in and tries to cut my head off. Uh, we're gonna go to shooting. I'm not gonna, oh, geez, I'm lazy. I don't wanna shoot. I'm gonna fire their bolters into them. Would you like to return fire? or new. Uh, no, I'm not going yeah. to. All right. The front two are rapid firing. And these are still knife fighting, so fours. That was a good roll though. Fours? Jeez, oh, they're mad, dude. I didn't expect to do that well. That's five saves. Sorry, no, nope. eight saves. And three ups. Bam, I kill. Okay, I kill five. Six, or is that just five? Five. Five, jeez. There we go. Uh, next up, we're gonna have uh, Lorgar. His unit's not gonna fire. Lorgar is instead just gonna channel Thaumaturgy on himself and the unit. Uh, I roll for him, and then for Lorgar, on a five up, they'd heal wounds. Thaumaturgic Sucker, but I gotta do a leadership check for a psychic check. We pass. Lorgar does not heal. The one random command squad does heal. There we go. Uh, I am again too lazy to fire the Warfire Cannon on that guy. I don't wanna mess things up, I'd rather just charge. And uh, can't fire them because I wanna charge over here. I clearly didn't move my Galvor back, so they're gonna sit right there. And uh, I'm not gonna bother firing anything. I'm just gonna go to charging. I'm done shooting. Things are going well. I don't need to shoot guns. Guns are for the weak. Uh, you were gonna have your guys high. That's why I don't wanna fire them because they're my chosen target. I'm not gonna fall for your Raven Guard tricks. We're gonna charge here into them instead. Blah! Oh. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be a lot of impact hits. Here we go. With that move, everyone can get in. And then, uh, we'll charge Lorgar's unit. Just into the tactical squad there. Hey, good enough. Plus two to it, because their movement and Lorgar's uh, Sire of the Wordbearer's ability. And they make it in there. The Maragall declare a charge against the Melta team. 
Hey, he gets plus one. Got well, two actually. Same reason. Lorgar and his speed. Would you like to Overwatch or anything? It's pretty much. How many attacks does he have? Uh, four on the charge. That's about it. Then I think I'll hold the line. Hold the line. That works too. Leadership check. They are. He's leadership eight, and he has to ignore us. He's only leadership eight. Got fear reduces it by one. Oh, uh, so then they fail. They're gonna boogie. These are gonna break instead. And they go 12! Get out of here, boys. Yikes. <laughs> right towards the uh you're probably you're right on the edge Not of the board. Enough. You're quite very close though. That changes things. Look at them, they get away. I can't quite make that charge. So it'll be a failed charge. I'll go. I already rolled earlier. I can't remember what it was. I'll just go like four or five. I'll just put it here. Hey, yeah. And the Galvor back on this side of the board are gonna declare a charge. Eey, good enough. Alright, we're gonna make it in there. And since I'm already over here, we're just gonna fight first over here with those Galvor back. We got 20 attacks to the claws. And uh, one power fist afterwards, if I uh, am able to. He's hit on threes. No chaplain here to help out. Drop the die. Threes to wound. Bop, 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 bop. These fail. Uh, I believe that kills one. Actually, these are all IP3. Do you have a sergeant in there? I do. Ooh, okay, well. Uh, hmm. So we're going to kill one. Uh, you have to do this one first. So that'd just be a regular guy. Then you have to do eight, nine two-up saves. Got to do them one at a time, though. Bunch of two-up saves. Uh, one... Two, there's nine to do. Three, four, he tanks them all, everyone. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> and then you get to go, and then I'll do my power fist. Got a power sword back. He's got three attacks with He's it. He's parrying Galvor back everywhere. Uh, two he's hits. got two hits, not bad. These are fives to wound because they're toughness five. Landing on a six. Oh, nice. Just right through their armor because it's AP3. They kill it while you wound one twice. This guy over here gets cut up by that. You know what? Let's put on the guy the sergeant was actually fighting right there. Epic duel between those two models. And then a bunch of uh, bayonet attacks. Eight attacks with their bayonets on their bolters. Fives. Which I believe are strength five, but fives to hit first of all. Two hits. Oh, he could finish off this guy while back. And twos to, sorry, fives to wound. Fours to wound. Because they're bayonets. No, no help. Two and a three. Then the power fist guy will go. Four attacks with a power fist, because actually five attacks. Attacks base and rage. Threes and dead on twos. Boom. I kill four. Very clearly not be the sergeant. <laughs> but we win that combat by somewhat. How many did Two. I kill there? Win by three. And I cause fear, so I technically win by four. The leadership down to four. And they break. We'll do a sweep. Roll yours. Oh, I gotta die over here. I can reach it. Oh, yeah. Oh, we sweep him because we have one more initiative than you. Sergeant was a hero, but they get his his unit is the one that fails him because they abandon him and he gets overwhelmed. All right, the Galvorback storm the ruins and guard this objective. Can't score it because they're Galvorback, but they're not lying. And then we have this sad little fight over here. The fact that those guys ran away, not ideal, but if they don't rally, I'll get my dark favor still. So we're going to fight over here. Lorgar will go first. Lorgar's attacks on threes. They are master crafted. One miss, and these are killing on twos. I'll kill the sergeant and then three other guys. And then go ahead and attack with your guy, get it out of the way, and then uh, we'll, we'll assume that guy's dead. Bayonet. Misses. Misses. All right. Would you like me to roll my attacks, or would uh, you? He's, he's dead. You'll die, yeah. I'll just keep them there, because they're already kind of scoring. Uh, well, I'm going to extend Lorgar out this way just in case. Uh, I need to catch them for some reason. We'll go right up to that thing with the consolidation. Don't get any dark favor though. But we're gonna plant this banner right there and be like, we are the best. Here I am, appraising myself as a Primarch running around killing tactical Marines. The banner and then we move on to our final fight of the turn. Got the six hammer wrath attacks for the charge. I will wound five times. I have saves, you can do one at a time on the artificer guy if you want. He's oh. dead already. Oh yeah, how'd he die? Uh, the oh, tanks. Oh yeah, like a tactical guy. That's right. These are all three ups then. I do one? Yeah, I kill one guy, eat that. And then I gotta do the Mortad. I'm sure, the Mortad's got, he like pretty much fights with the butt ends of his pistols or like pistols in combat. You don't get the effect of the plasma, obviously, but it's kind of representing him like dueling with his pistols. Uh, anyways, consoles, three attacks, or Centurion's three attacks, charge two pistols, maybe. Threes and fours. One wound, three up. Nah, nothing. I gotta see what the frick these weird axe rakes do. I say weird, I like to, they're standard axe rakes. I just often forget what a standard axe rake profile is. Get all of my initiative four attacks out of the way. Get the, all the pylons going. These are all good. Everyone's in base contact, except for some of these guys, but they can't really do much about that. Just getting a little bit closer. And uh, yep, 
I will do the axe rakes, which are, if anyone's curious, AP one. Sorry, AP three plus one strength. Skill four. Four is to hit. These are three swoon with shred and AP three. So we kill six of them. I believe there's only six left. There's four, five. Five, all right. You get to fight back though. So you get to you get to figure out which way ever you want to attack and then we'll resolve that. Everything's gonna hit the tacticals. Bunch of chain swords. They have two attacks each. 10 attacks. Four is to hit. Four is to wound. Oh, with shred as well, so three wins so far. And another three more? Two. Two more, all right. Five armor saves. You were gonna, oh, their power armor is resolute, man. You cannot break through it. They get cut down by the Ashen Circle. And then my stuff consolidates. So the circle just go towards the crater, or the crates, and the tacticals consolidate onto the objective. And that will be the end of my turn two. So score-wise, I got one, two, three of the objectives with line on it, too far away from this one. So I'll just roll three dice, and I get only one victory point. Very spicy. Ready? Yes. Let's see, what do you roll, what do you roll? Uh, up, 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 up. comes in on a two plus. Hey. He shows up. Nice, that's a five. And we're good, we're gonna find out where Corax is going. These guys rally. Hey. Six? They yeah. rally. Yeah, I reduce it by one, but you're still good at six because you got the sergeant. So they can do a little bit of a wiggle, and uh, I gotta deal with them. They move over there with their regroup. I forgot to, it will not die, Lorgar. Oh, he's still at five. I have the Raven Guard, well, the Dark Fear is gonna attempt to show up over here. And then, boop, 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 you get all this. You do have to roll a D6 first, though, to see if it's a disordered deep strike oh, or. Or is it, well, maybe the first one's, We're I good. can't remember. You're good, good. and all the same. Seven inches, that shouldn't matter too much. Over here is okay, because you can just do the good old fashioned horsey second edition. Everything I love about the horse here is in one game. <laughs> and boom, 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 boom. I will shoot at them, though, with the interceptor on these guys. It is free, because they got the augury scanner. Two bullets! Fighting is gone now. Do, do, do. One hit, because no more knife fighting. And no wound. Uh, that'll be it for over here. They've moved, they've moved. With the dreadnought, and that's about it. We'll go right to shooting after that. The deal with the dreadnought as he crouches up on the objective, he will be a denial unit. That's gonna fire everything for them. And the plasma's gonna fire the six shot volley into them as well. No gets hot on that, and efficient. Who's to hit with the dreadnought plasma gun? Uh, only one miss so far, and the re well, two misses actually. Three misses, my gosh. Two's to wound and breaching four up. And I'm Three breaches. And I think I'm going to evade this as well. Might as well. This is Glorious Martyrdom, actually. I forgot I had that. This guy will eat it and die, and then all the, sh the, the attack is fully resolved. And that's my shooting phase reaction. We're going to put a bunch of these shots down the table at Lorgar and his unit or his retinue. Urgent on a two, and everyone else on a three. Good hit. And everyone else on a three. Oh, that's damn Everybody. good. Everybody. Everyone hits. He's doing rolling ones. Five is random. Uh, no ones. One rend and four wounds all on Lorgar? Yes. Yeah. If he dies here, these are the two up saves. Okay, we're good. And then the invulnerable save from the armor of the word. We're good, no damage. We have just this squad and Korax to resolve. Which one do you want to do first? Korax will snap fire, uh, full fire into Lorgar. He's got like a couple of Kaotech he pistols has, or something. Yeah. Fair, fancy. He's got fancy stuff. He hits on twos. Clearly two hits. Probably winning on two. Six and two's runs on threes. Ooh. Two's to wound. Hey, two rents. Nice. They're both on both Lorgar. Going to and bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, we take one, fail one, and a deflagrate on a boop. I wonder, do I have to care? Ah, dang, I gotta look it up. Uh, deflagrate, ah, you know what, I'll just take it on Lorgar, I don't care. I was curious if deflagrate gets to be allocated because of the Primark thing. I'm gonna save myself the time and take it on Lorgar. Boop, boop, boom, down to three. A very spicy amount of wounds to have, but I believe in Lorgar, he's fine. And Lorgar's the only one in range over here for their guns. Uh, so we've got a couple shots with the Meltas. This Melta gun can hit the command squad. Oh, okay, then we'll do him first. Misses. Misses. And then we have this Melta Gunner. Six. Nope. Misses. Plasma, Plasma pistol. Gun. Ah, nothing. All right, right to charging. Let's go ahead and do this charge here. I'm just going to hold with my unit. Boom, try my best an to keep it going. Plus three. Yeah, you're good for sure. <laughs> like that, there'll be one, two, three, four Hammer of Wraths. One of them is uh, Korax's strength coming in. Uh, that's it for charging. I think that's it for charging in general, right? Yes. All right, so we'll go ahead and resolve those Hammer of Wraths and uh, we'll figure this out. Go do Korax's first, which is, I think he's strength six base. Yes. So one on two and then three of them on fours. So that, look at me assuming the Corvidine pinions do Hammer of Wraths. Apparently they don't. All right, well, three, nope, one wound. That's it. Artificer armor. We're good. No point in issuing any challenges here because Primarchs and everything involved is a chosen warrior. So we're just going to move on to initiatives. What fighting style did you want with? Uh, murder strikes the only one he can actually use. Yeah, because there's no point in taking rage because I held. So whatever his regular attacks are. Seven. Bring it on. Hitting on threes because my average weapon skill is um, 
what's it called? Six. Six. Yeah, you're probably I have seven. The chaplain. True. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Re rolling any misses. This one fell off the table. Because of Mr. Chaplin. And then. Does the big guy go down? Six these are all hits. hits. And these are all winning on twos. Because you're hitting the unit. Maybe the big guy dies here. Is there shred on these? He has shred. I would and hope he so. He also has preferred enemy independent character. Sure, yeah. Hey. They all wound. Six wounds all on Lorgar? Yes. Let's go. Hi, Lorgar. It's over. I can see. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Boom. Oh. Just like the books. It's be well, without the assistance of the Night Haunter. Uh, that will give. That'll clean up the rest of this unit and kill it off. And that will give, uh, well, four. Frank, extra four victory points for kills. Two for killing Primark, two for decapitation strike. And uh, then I'll get some points over here, sure, but it won't be enough to keep up. Or at the very least, you know, they'll wipe them out, they'll sweep them, come over here, kill them off. And all I really got left is the middle over there. So unfortunately, decapitation strike happens yet again, making the mission irrelevant and more or less going for the Warlord kill. Unless. Where'd he come from? What's he doing? Why is he watching? Why is he not helping? What's he going? What's, is he gonna help? I don't know. Tune in to find out more. <laughs> Luckily, well, I can see jokingly, we can play out the rest of the game rather quickly, which is nice. Cause no matter what, this is gonna kill whatever. We can just assume that's gonna kill cause the murder strike killing him off, dealing with him, no problem. Then you could either sweep that way to kill the troops off over there or sweep this way to kill the troops off over there. The main issue is that uh, Frank and his Raven Guard have more scoring left on objective. So it's all going to come down to some rolls. So this would be the end of your turn. You kill all that off. That's a really big deal. You're at seven victory points to my, my four. Cause I only got one last turn. That's going to be a big deal. And then my turn, my turn three, it'd be super simple. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to back up a little bit, stay on the objective, stay around here. I'd probably just send both the Galvor back for that guy just to pin him where he is. And I'd make the charge. Probably don't have to worry about that. And then I would roll for this objective and this objective. Cause they just walk on it. Um, but you could, on it. So I actually won't get this objective because I could walk on it and then you could just be like, eh, nope, me here too. So deny me. But then I have to kill it. So I have to see if I can kill this thing, I guess. Do my turn quickly. They move forward and then you would react to get on the objective as a denial unit. And then I see that and I have to boop, pop everything onto him. Uh, I got my Mortat here, the two Galvorback units. And uh, I'd probably risk the Mortat return fire because I don't care about the Ashen Circle. So I'll fire the Mortat into him. And if you want, you can turn fire. Sure. Toughness seven. So these are the Mortat on twos. Uh, a couple misses in there. Again, doesn't get hot, so I don't have to worry about that. And four, sorry, uh, fives to wound. But they're also AP two. So one, two, three, four, five invulnerable saves. Star five ups on him. And you make nice a good amount. And he only takes one, but I need every, any little help I get. I'll say you return fire. All oh, my guys are dead. What is, <laughs> and then uh, leadership, we're good. All right. And then the Gal Vorback are in a charge. And, and then you can overwatch. Uh, I'll charge with that one first. They, they're scared, they can see them through the thing. The other thing they notice is the Mara Gaul is gonna run away from that horrible combat and move towards the support team back there to try and get the kill on that. Uh, okay, so that's all this. I resolved, that was the return fire. I didn't roll it up, but we'll say they're all dead. He passes leadership. And then I declare a charge with them. We overwatch. The blast did scatter off with the reroll from the Nuncio box. It didn't do, it hit a couple guys, did no damage. However, the missile, I also saved against, luckily. And then the heavy bolter actually pinged off that one wound that the sergeant uh, got this guy down to one on. So that sergeant, you know, coming back from the dead to haunt me. And then a couple of charge rolls from these guys. They're going to make it nine. And then those guys over there, they're going to make it as well. All right, charging this, the four man squad on the back and the chaplain and the other squad out front. The Maragall is gonna declare a charge over at those guys just in case. Uh, seven, eh, seven will get him in over here. I'll quickly resolve this one. Saw phase reaction on this guy because we overwatched the Galvor back earlier. So three attacks on him plus rage. He doesn't have rage, he's, he has that, uh, what's it called, rampage. Doesn't come into play here though. Threes to hit, twos to kill, kill two of them, and then you get to fight back. That's two attacks with his lightning claw. Good luck, Mr. Sergeant. One miss. Does hit though. And does he wound with the reroll for shred? No. no. And then you owe me a leadership at minus three effectively because I cause fear. Ooh, He's you're good. old. Excellent. Good job. Can bomb over to this fight to resolve this one nice and quick. The big thing about those guys not dying over there is I was hoping to do a dark favor on them quickly, but they held. They, they, was, they withstood, funny enough. Too afraid to shoot them because I could have done the weird uh, Raven Guard wiggle away and make, made my charge really hard. And these are the Galvor back with the Chaplain hitting the Dreadnought on. He's probably web skill four, I assume. His web skill five. It only mattered for one attack. We got the Chaplain. These are all the rending attacks. Sixes to wound. 
Uh, ooh, nothing on this one. And then we got the Power Fist. Let's get it out of the way. I know it's not part of this unit. Oh, geez, everything misses. Uh, there we go, four hits with the Power Fist. And these are all twos to wound. Strike 10. Three wounds there with Embalms. And... Well, three damage, he's got two wounds left, and then the other unit will attack him. Get the Power Fist out of the way on the other squad, because he wouldn't die, and he's the... No hatred here, though. That chaplain got sniped. Two's to wound. Strike 10. Three more wounds. Three more saves at five up Invuln. Uh, okay, he's got one wound left. That means I have to do the other three guys attacking. Forced to hit with no rerolls. But as long as I get one six in here, then I'm good to go. One, uh, five up. Oh, man, these were instant death. If I had any of those earlier, that would have been amazing against the Dreadnought. Hey, got him. He dies. Oh, he explodes. Every It's like uh, automatic. Is it D everything within D6? It's D6. Yeah. It's five. five. Excellent. Three tacticals are hit over here. And then two, two. two wounds on them. These are instant death. We got three ups. One guy dies, but not enough to panic. This is the assault phase, I guess. Uh, roll this guy. He's wounded on a two. More tat. That's a four. Four works for me. Two up. Ah, oh, he's dead. Oh no. Uh, shouldn't matter too much. Four. Uh, you, yeah, four on them. Four back there. Two's on them. They have three wounds on them. And then roll me six for the other guys. Six for the other guys. Six. Nice. The squad of six. They have a three up save. Uh, feel no pain because they're toughness five. One, two of them. One of them takes two wounds, and then the squad of four had three up saves, and feel no pain. One wound on them. All right, so just a couple wounds on them, a couple wounds on them. Overall, they're all good. And then we'll just say these these guys are all dead. I'm just assuming from the uh, return fire from earlier. Their deaths do not matter. We sell their lives cheaply. And then they would both consolidate that way to protect this a little bit. One will go this way, one will go that way, just to try and stop those guys. One thing we do have to check is this fight over here. I have to roll, they wouldn't all die. I'll have to roll a leadership check on them. Uh, they would pass. And, or access uh, unit would hit and run. Yeah, we're looking at a hit and run here. They it, pass they it. Pass. So uh, that way, this way, go for killing on them. We can't kill them this turn, but. 3d6, remove one, plus uh, movement. So oh, they will go, go that's okay. 18. This doesn't matter too much. We'll say he goes there, they go there, they're all dead, they're all dead. Uh, but I get to kill the, I get to score the points for, ah, uh, no, because you deny that one. Well, I, I get to, oh, no, you would deny that one. Because you hit and run that way. But those guys are still aligned, and I would score that. They're not dead. Yeah. So they go that way, that way. If you can separate on a hit and run, maybe, maybe not. We'll have, I don't know, maybe these guys are still alive. Too many what is at this point. Uh, on the end of my turn, denying that one, denying that one, two for this, two for the other one. Boom, 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 I'll get two more points, and then you'll kill, then your turn is easy. Your turn four is super easy. They're dead, they're dead. I don't care about any of this stuff. I might charge them, I might not, but I'll just get another point for that, so I'll get three more points. And in the mini Wargaming Vault, available to our YouTube and Vault members, we play 3,000 points of Alpha Legion against the Space Wolves with the Legion Daddies on the table. It will be a mission out of the Siege of Chthonia book, so if you like that pairing and that mission, or that book at least, then I bid you check out becoming a member by clicking on the link down below to sign up for a seven day free trial, where you'll have access to this battle report as well as the rest of the content we have in the vault, including quite a bit of heresy battle reports. And you know, you can decide if you want to stick around afterwards. Thanks again for checking out this video, everyone, and I'll catch you all next time very soon. You know what? It is actually way too many what ifs. I'm not even too sure why I'm doing this. There's a lot of game to play here still. I'll just concede because there's too much to do. And uh, losing Lorgar there is good enough to shake the morale of the Ward Bears and throw in the towel there. Had enough of that nonsense. Korax just coming in, sweeping in, and then they would have probably gotten wiped out anyways. I was just too lazy to roll it out. I just, uh, because. I should have rolled Lorgar's attacks uh, saves one at a time. He could have failed like the first three. And then Korax could have been like dead, dead, dead. Something like that. And then they could have consolidated, split off on your turn, go kill them, kill them. It would have, it would have been all good. Uh, there's not much I could do about that. It was the double ones I rolled on the first turn. And then Lorgar eventually going down, which uh, inevitably caused the loss. Doing really well on this side of the battlefield, did very poorly on that side of the battlefield, apparently. And that there, folks, is it for this game. I do unfortunately have to run. I got a stupid live stream game to go play after this. It's been a long day, but Frank, thank you for coming by and playing some Heresy. We do need more people to play. Without them, we won't have the content. And sorry if it seems like I was in a rush, everyone. I kind of ran out of time towards the end there, and I was curious to see how it would play out, but I think very clearly the Raven Guard would take this one uh, with, like, very, very little struggle here. 
uh, the Dark Furies alone, and uh, Corvus Korax just cleaning up whatever remnants were left alive. I thought I kind of had it in the bag there, but when I rolled that double one on scoring, that really punished me there kind of heavily. And then obviously the uh, Execution Force? Decapitation Strike, that's what it's called. Uh, kind of coming in big there for the uh, four-point Warlord kill. Usually, Lorgar doesn't go down that easily, but... Um, I guess what I should have done is this should have challenged with Lorgar. But these guys living persistently the whole time, I probably shouldn't have marked them. I should have gone for the Despoilers or something. I don't know. Probably whatever I marked would have somehow weaseled its way to safety as these guys did over here. I thought they were dead for sure, but I just couldn't get them. So had I challenged with Lorgar, I could have kept him alive. And he would have had a higher weapon skill. And it could have kept clashing for kind of a long time. And I think he would have done pretty good, actually. Even though he's only killing one model at a time. Hopefully they would have eaten some of the wounds before the chat. He would have died eventually, but one more turn later, which could have been a bigger help uh, overall. Maybe. Maybe that could have worked. I don't know. That would require a lot more thinking, and I didn't have the time for it. But stay tuned for more heresy to come. As long as we have the guests. I know Josh is recording some, and we do have a few repeat guests. But don't forget, if you want to come in and play, miniwargaming.com slash challenge for all the details. And one more thank you to Frank. <laughs> Happy Wargaming, everyone. Toodaloo!